everyone, welcome to episode 30 of D&D's Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realmsmith. I am Jason Azevedo, your host for today. Um, and 30 episodes, it's unbelievable, it's crazy, and we're so happy for all of you to have joined us this whole time. Um, right off the top, we are on the D&D Twitch, we are on the Realmsmith Twitch, and we're on the Realmsmith Facebook. Uh, I am trying to catch all of that chat, so if you have a question, make sure that you write question, and then write your question through the chat. I'll be responding. If you've got any thoughts or ideas, or if you've painted these miniatures before, then uh, I'd love to hear from you while uh, we're doing our thing. Uh, hello, MP. Hello, Tangu Bruxo. Hello, MJ Cook. Hey, everyone on the D&D Twitch. Welcome, everyone. And, of course, welcome everybody on Facebook, including one of our cast members is watching. Melanie Hepburn is watching, who plays Callie on our Into the Mist um, live stream. A couple announcements just off the top. Uh, first off, I want to thank our partners, of course, D&D, um, WizKids, for providing these, these awesome miniatures that we paint and to Vallejo, who provides us this amazing paint and sponsors the show. Um, we are so obviously grateful and thankful after three, 30 episodes, and we're still going strong and continue to do, and will continue to do tons, tons more as we move forward. Uh, as you can see, we've updated our studio in the last couple episodes for our live streams, uh, both this one and for Into the Mist. Um, bunch of, yeah, bunch of uh, announcements. The first one is, that um, we are going to be at GaryCon, and we are the new platinum sponsor of the GaryCon show. We're very excited. It's a, close, a show that's very close to our heart. Uh, Luke Gygax, who is the son of Gary Gygax, one of the founders and creators of, of D&D, uh, puts on the show every year in memory of his father, and we are honored to be there. So we're the platinum sponsors, and we are doing something really great, a couple things really great at GaryCon. Haven't announced them yet. We'll probably announce them tomorrow night our, on our Into the Mist uh, live stream, which is also live on the DD Twitch. Uh, Into the Mist is a Curse of Strahd campaign that we run every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific. Um, and it's a great show. It's been getting tons and tons of positive feedback, lots of good comments. And thank you so much for joining us. So join us tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, for our Curse of Strahd campaign on the DD Twitch and on the Realmsmith Twitch as well. Um, what else? Uh, our adventure boxes. Right now, we're running a $20 off promotion uh, off your first purchase, um, and you can get that by using the promo code I Want Adventure, and that is at realmsmith.tv. So you can check that out. It's our monthly adventure box that we send to people with our own campaign that runs month to month with everything you need to run an immersive, incredible D&D experience at your table. I think that's all. If you like this, follow us. I think this will still work. If you follow us on the Realmsmith Twitch, it will light off this purple uh, potion bottle behind us. It works on Monday nights. I think it's set up to work tonight. We're going to find out if you follow us. If it goes off, then we know it works. Uh, let's jump right in here to the tools of the trade. So for tools tonight, uh, you guys asked for it and we delivered it. We are going to be painting the Spectator and Gazers. That is the Spectator miniature um, from WizKids, uh, which is basically like a smaller beholder. That's at least the lore behind it. Um, and so we're really excited about that. And then they have Gazers, which are actually created by the dreams of beholders. Uh, and so WizKids have packaged those up nicely for us together in one package. And so we're super excited to have that um, for you all tonight. Uh, we're also using some Vallejo bushes. Uh, I use a number two, a number one, and a zero. Uh, some water for washing your brushes, of course, and diluting your paint. And then some paper towel for dry brushing, cleaning your brushes, and a paint palette for uh, mixing your paints and holding your paints. When it comes to the paint list, this is the following. It's a bit of a different. Um, it's a bit of a different kind of mix or palette than we've used previously. Uh, we've got heavy green for a base coat, camouflage green, and livery green, and that's going to be for all of the scales and kind of the main body of the gazers and the spectator. Then we have a uh, green wash, which we're going to use obviously on top of that in order to kind of bring it all down and darken it up and make it nice and green. Bone white, sepia wash, and off white for the eyes and for the the horns that are found on the creatures. Uh, tan flesh wash and rosy flesh for the gums and the tongue and all of that nasty stuff. Somber gray, steel gray, and electric blue for the main eye on the spectator, and then black, of course, for the pupil 
of that eye. All right, folks, I am so excited. Also want to thank Sirenscape as well uh, for partnering us on this stream as well. We like to play Sirenscape music in the background, and this is some of the stuff that we'll be playing tomorrow night in our uh, Into the Mist live stream. So uh, please enjoy that. All right, so this is the Spectator Mini. I'll even hold it at the right angle that the miniature is done. Uh, and that is the artwork from the DM's Guide. Or sorry, the Monster Manual. And then these little guys, look at these little cute little guys. These are the Gazers. Now they are going to be fun and challenging to paint because they're so stinking small. But we're going to show you some really cool... Um, options and uh, kind of uh, uh, approaches to painting really small miniatures. And it's about making the most kind of impact that you can um, in a small space. So again, thank you so much, folks, for uh, joining us. Uh, let me just take a quick look at the chat here. Um, Melanie's chatting in Facebook. Thank you. Uh, question, I heard you guys are coming to GaryCon. Are you guys hosting a session or just participating? Oh, Prometheus Bound. Uh, we are going to be at GaryCon. We are Platinum Sponsors. Uh, and we will absolutely be doing a stream. That's all I can say tonight. I'm going to announce the what stream we're going to be doing tomorrow night. Um, we're just finalizing a couple details. So um, just know that we will be live uh, from GaryCon at some point at GaryCon. That's all I can say. Um, and we're very excited. Please, Prometheus, um, come say hi to us if you're going as well. And if anybody else is going to, to GaryCon, please join us. It's an incredible show. It's a great show. And, um, and there is Prometheus Bound now. Cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's jump right in, folks. I'm not seeing any chat on the D&D Twitch yet, but there's lots of people watching. So if you guys, again, have questions, jump in. All right. Number two brush, I use that for a lot of my heavy lifting on the smaller miniatures. That is going to be a lot for the base coat stuff. And we're going to use heavy green. Now, heavy green in the Vallejo Game Color line is an extra opaque paint. Uh, what that means is that it will go on in one coat. Um, I've never had an issue not, it not going on in on one coat or on in one coat, I should say. Uh, but it's a nice, rich green. Uh, I always dilute the paints, even the extra opaque ones, just with a touch of water just so it flows a little bit better and it'll cover really, really well. Not worried about getting the eyeballs at this point. Um, it's okay if we get this green into these recesses because it's, we're gonna be painting it anyways. And in fact, I prefer to kind of overlap those areas a little bit because then you, you're absolutely not gonna get um, primer showing up uh, in the recesses, like between the painted areas and the non-painted areas. Um, this sound set for Sirenscape is kind of fun, but it goes kind of quiet. Let's see what else we got there. There's something out there. We're going to find out what that is. Uh, I've been digging really deep into all of the um, kind of spooky sound sets and moods that Sirenscape has, and uh, it's so much fun. Uh, and they are our new main title sponsor for Into the Mist, which we're super thankful and Honored to have them. Okay, so laying down a nice solid base coat of heavy green here. Now this is quite dark. We're going to bring it up quite a bit. You can see from the um, subject matter there, uh, the illustration, that um, it gets pretty light. So we're going to work up that, that tone through a couple shades of green. Uh, I'm also going to take a bit of a page out of the Beholder tutorial that we did on our YouTube page. It's one of our first uh, Vallejo WizKid tutorials, and I just got it on the base. You want to kind of make sure or try not to get it on the clear plastic flying stand. Um, uh, I'm going to take a bit of a page out of that one and make some of these horns along the side of the head. Uh, in, the, in the reference material, they're kind of all green. I'm actually going to make them kind of bone color. Um, just to kind of give some delineation between all of those kind of areas. Uh, the stalks, of course, we're just going to do green. And again, with these stalks, you're going to want to kind of flip it around, twist it around, and make sure that you get all the nooks and crannies. Because with these kinds of miniatures, especially beholders, you know, I'll be almost done um, the whole miniature and then like turn it around and realize that under one of the stalks I didn't paint, and I've got uh, I've got primer showing. So. Just be diligent and kind of flipping it around, turning it around. The other thing too is, is that paint 
shrinks as it dries. Um, so obviously you're not seeing all of the areas you missed right when you apply it. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing is sometimes with the glossiness of paint when it goes on, um, it hides, somehow it hides. And so when it gets matte, when it dries and it mats down and the finish kind of becomes less glossy, you tend to notice things a bit more, so. I think Bruno, the tavern dog, is hearing the, the crows and the howls in the background, and he's corralling in the corner there. It just tells you how realistic Sirenscape is. Even Bruno, the tavern dog. Okay. Yeah, I saw a question about um, about pr uh, being primed, about uh, minis being primed. Is that I found your marvelous tutorials this past Thursday. Tangu Bruxo says, and decided to start painting my first mini this weekend. Thank you so much for sharing your craft. You're so freaking welcome, Tangu. That's awesome. So happy. Uh, it, there's nothing that pleases me more than hearing that we've, you know, turned somebody on to DMing or to D&D &D and playing or painting miniatures. It's, it's one of those things that when we go to shows and we take this show kind of live, um, we were just at PAX and did it. Um, and let me know if the music's too loud too, folks, if it's too distracting. Um, or it's too much, then let me know and I can, I can turn it down. We don't have a producer on these nights. It's just me solo in the studio, so. Um, but, um, where was I? Dad brain on a Sunday. I forget. Oh, yeah, when we take these live and, you know, just seeing people, the joy on, the people's, on people's faces um, when they paint the first miniature, didn't realize that they could do it um, or had, you know, doubts or their abilities or whatever, and it comes out amazing, and they're so happy. Um, and then, of course, following that is that look of addiction. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And they run right over to the WizKids booth, which is usually close to our, to our master classes, and they kind of run over, and they end up buying a bunch of stuff. And I feel a little bad for their bank account, but feel really great for the creativity and the community that we have new people. So welcome to the, the craft and the community and the hobby. Uh, and, you know, that this that's exactly why we do this. We do this so that we can, you know, uh, inspire other people to, to do the same um, and really find a love for this stuff, wherever that might be, whether it's DMing or, or building, crafting, painting, all of that stuff. There's room for everyone uh, in this community, so very excited. Um, and yes, the, um, the WizKids miniatures all come pre-primed, the unpainted ones all come pre-primed. To, this came right out of the box, literally two minutes before I started the show, um, and and I started painting it right away. So, and this this one is for Puppy Lover. Puppy Lover was um, a an attendee at PAX Unplugged, uh, who really loved our stuff. Came to a bunch of classes and then signed up for a whole year subscription to our uh, adventure boxes right at the show. Um, and she asked that we do the Spectator for our 30th episode last week, and so here we are doing the Spectator and the little. The little bitty gazers. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. I'm going to put this down now that I've kind of finished the base coat on it. And then I'm going to let it dry a little bit. And then I'm going to pick it up again and realize that I missed a bunch of spots. So I'm just going to set it aside. I'm going to paint these itty bitty gazers. And then we'll do that. And this bending spiral is real. It really, really is. Hey, Lego, good to see you. Uh, I require people at my table to bring their own mini and, yes, even help them paint them. That's a great idea. Do you prime the Nolzer's minis even though they're pre-primed? No. Um, question, when do the adventure boxes get dispatched? Uh, when do they get dispatched? So we uh, ship every two weeks. Um, and so, or I think there's a shipment every two weeks that goes out. So basically, if you subscribe, uh, your box ships within however close you are to that two week period, that date, um, we, we ship them out. Um, that is currently our schedule, but you should wait no longer than two to three weeks to get your, depending on where you are in the world, two to three weeks to get your adventure box once you've subscribed. Um, we have a new fulfillment partner, which has been amazing. Um, you know, we've had our challenges in growing and gro growing pains and, and some of our long-term folks uh, hit a bit of a snag uh, in the uh, Adventure 2 stuff. Um, but uh, Adventure 1, Adventure 2, uh, most, uh, most of Adventure 2 is ready to go. So those brand new subscribers will get 
all of them. We have lots of stock, and so um, that is the geyser. Look at that. Cute little geyser. All green. We're going to see how, how much detail we can actually get onto these geysers. It's going to be fun to see. Um, but uh, And then, of course, our Kickstarter. We're really busy at work uh, fulfilling it and sourcing all the stuff, and we're making good progress. Uh, we've um, put an update on our site recently that uh, we're delayed. Uh, probably February is when we'll be shipping the main kind of bulk of the Kickstarter stuff um, sometime in February. So we're still shooting for that and very excited to to have that be the reality in the case. There we go. Another Gazer. Gazers are base coated. That was the quickest base coat I've ever done. It was like a two-second base coat. Uh, I found... Uh, let's see. You guys are chatty. I love it. Uh, Red, set, Red, Red Hulk says, what are these adventure boxes you speak of? Um, basically, why not just give your minis a dark wash and call it done? <laughs> that is a good idea. Sundog, you are the, the boss of your miniatures. Um, and in some cases, I do that. Some, case, some cases, I do uh, like a, a, a... I typically do a base coat because washes don't necessarily adhere too well to the uh, gray primer that's there. So I do like to give a base coat. But sometimes, for skeletons, for example, I'll do a base coat of bone white and I'll just do a wash of sepia, and it does most of the work for you. And a lot of people kind of run that way. Um, and that is absolutely... Um, there are levels and, and, and kind of um, difficulty levels or uh, commitment levels or whatever. And I, I always say that, you know, for D&D, &D, these miniatures will be on your table uh, a minimal amount of time compared to other miniature-based hobbies, wargaming, all that kind of stuff. Well, the wargaming, you bring a whole army to the table every time, and so you're going to want to take your time to paint it and do it well. Well, these ones, uh, basically, I want to get a mini that looks impressive on the table, but I don't want to spend five, six hours painting a miniature. And that's why these shows are two hours. We paint everything that we have for that show, unless it's a longer kind of series, in those two hours to show people that it's absolutely possible. But you are the boss of your miniature, and uh, you. these are just suggestions and ideas but it's important that you guys paint your miniatures the way that you want to, that'll bring the most joy to you and your players. Um, and that's incredibly important. Okay, I think, I think I got most of it. Anybody see any spots? Yeah, I do there. Every time I, tw I twist it, I see one more area of primer that I did not cover. It's crazy. There we go. Okay. It's absolutely, yeah, and, and we got a, a comment from Equalon, Aqualon. It's worth putting more time on player minis, though. And that's why uh, we take time to paint our uh, player character miniatures. Uh, we did them in two hours. We did two for, in two hours in the last couple weeks for Into the Mist. Um, but, for example, the Frost Giant is, was modeled, the Whiskers Frost Giant is modeled after Harshnag from uh, Storm King's Thunder. And so we took a little longer on that mi miniature because um, he's an ongoing, um, reoccurring NPC in that campaign. So we want to spend a bit more time because he has a bit more time on the table. We're going to take some camouflage green at this point. That is going to be kind of the first layer. Uh, are we going to do this? Yes, we are going to do that. Uh, camouflage green. Um, we're going to take a little bit, put it on our palette, and we're going to do what is called dry brushing. So you're going to take that green. Load your brush and then wipe most of it off on the um, on the paper towel until there's almost nothing coming off except dry residue. And the reason we do that is for new painters out there. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush the brush over the miniature now, and that dry residue is going to catch on all of the texture and the higher kind of ridges and areas of the miniature, and then give a natural highlight. Isn't that cool? And like I said, these, these spectators, as you can see, they're quite a bit brighter than this. So that green base coat was just, just that. It was a base coat. And we're just going to continue to dry brush. And again, that's camouflage green from the game color line. Back to adventure boxes. You guys have me uh, answering lots of questions tonight. I love it. I love it. I love it. It makes it fun and interesting. Um, our adventure boxes is, you know, uh, there was a point where we were doing a lot of tutorials um, and kind of hobby tutorials and... and terrain tutorials, and we thought, how cool would it be to not only teach people how to do stuff, 
but send everything that they needed to their home so they could do it themselves. And that's kind of where the uh, Adventure Box idea was born. Um, we decided to start sending people boxes with kind of miniatures and, a, and an encounter and it's kind of everything you needed at the table. Well, it grew from there, and now it's become a whole campaign. So it, uh, we have six box story arcs. Uh, the first adventure uh, is called Twisted Hand of Fate, and that's done. Uh, done meaning it's a complete adventure. So if you subscribe, it's, you start off at box one, which is the Twisted Hand of Fate adventure, um, or sh the Shattered Shield of the Twisted Hand of Fate, and then it goes through those six, and then it'll continue on to box seven, which is the beginning of the Fallen Order campaign. Um, and again, all the boxes have everything you need in them. Uh, we have scented candles for setting the mood. We have a Sirenscape sound set specifically curated and, cr and created by a Brandon who wrote, writes our modules. Um, there's miniatures in there. You can get paint if you don't have paint at home uh, for extra cost. Um, and uh, anyways, there's tons. And like we have player items that you give your players in there to set the mood and further the story. So... You can check all that out at realmsmith.tv. Um, it is a premium item. It's not for everybody necessarily, budget-wise, but uh, but it's something we really are excited about, and people are loving uh, when they receive it. And uh, and yeah, okay. So there we go. So that is that is pretty much a dry brush. There, you can see it's caught all of the detail on there, and I think it's pretty good right now. I brought the green wash. I don't know if we're going to need it. So let's just, we're going to see. Not so sure we're going to need it. We'll find out. Okay, so that is that. That We're going to be careful here. We're going to do the gazers. They have come a long way, Red Hulk. Uh, Red Hulk saying that he's been doing D&D for 25 years. And it's come a long way. That is absolutely true. Uh... Questions, uh, uh, question, um, sorry, suggestions for varnishing with an airbrush, thin like paints. Um, I actually haven't varnished with an airbrush before. There are lots of tutorials online about that. Um, I'm excited um, at, at that idea. And I, I do use uh, the dry brush for like OSL effects or some base coating, um, larger miniatures. I haven't used it for varnishing, so I can't really answer that question. There is a varnish though in the game color Air, game airline, which is the game, it's the airbrush equivalent of the Vallejo game color line, and they have varnishes that you can put right through the airbrush. And I have had nothing but great um, uh, experiences, sorry, with the uh, game airline in general. So I imagine that the varnishes are just as good. That is your gazer. A little dry brush on the gazer, and the next one. Lots of questions tonight, folks. This is great. Uh, and yes, I plan on putting extra work Aqualon on the on the on that main eye. Um, what if they are sight impaired? Yeah, you have you can get goggles or, or like um, glasses that you can that you can like magnifiers that are really great. Um, DM Scotty uses them, and um, he sent me a link, and I can't remember exactly what that link was offhand, but you can get them on Amazon if you just look up like magnifying glasses um, and uh, that, that, that'll help for that sort of thing. Okay, so that is dry brushed. Um, do I want to dry brush one more? Yeah, I'm going to dry brush one more level at this stage. Um, our main channel, for those of you that are asking, is um, realmsmith. Uh, sorry, twitch.tv slash realmsmith. Um, yeah, and it, uh, you can, it, it, the links for all our stuff will come up kind of in this window over here uh, as you watch. Uh, I, ha I still have a Dritz Dwarden 1990 metal figure that I painted myself. Nice. Old school. Man, those old school minis still have a, a close place in my heart. You guys will notice that I used some Ral Partha minis as um, suits of armor in the last episode of Into the Mist. Um, question, In, Into the Mist is amazing. You guys always do such a great job with your streams. Would you ever consider doing a behind the scenes of how you prep for a session? Would love to see your workflow. Yes, that is a great idea and something we've talked about. Um, 
That would be, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll put some thought into that and consider that. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the su suggestion, MJ. Um, let me just check in on Facebook here real quick. Hi, Kelly, as always. Paul. Um, Melanie, of course, is still chatting with everybody. She's keeping everybody entertained here on Facebook. Um, it's great. Really great. Uh, so many viewers tonight. It's awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay. Lots watching on, on the D&D Twitch again. If you have a question, um, make sure that you write question first and then the question so that I can see it while all the comments are kind of f scrolling by at top speed here. Um, okay. All right, so what I'm doing now is I've got livery green, which is a lighter green in the game color line. It's a lot lighter and a lot more kind of fluorescent. So this is really gonna bring up the color, but I'm focusing the dry brush on the highest areas that would catch the light the most. So I'm not, I'm being careful not to put it kind of into the recesses. I'm doing it around the edge of the face there, on the brow, the crown of the head, and around the eye. Something, something just went down. Sirenscape, something's close. Um, this is the free Witchwood uh, sound set uh, that I'm playing tonight. I created a custom version of this sound set for tomorrow night's session, um, which you'll hear tomorrow night. But this one is Witchwood, which I believe comes free when you want to try Sirenscape. You can check that all out, of course, at sirenscape.com. Uh, they have some pretty awesome stuff. I think it adds, I can't imagine playing a game without Sirenscape now, fairly, uh, to be honest. It had so much um, atmosphere. Okay, that is, so he's pretty bright at this point, and I don't even know, once I've done the rest of it, I don't even know if I'm going to use that green wash that I have on the table. So, okay, we're going to do the same to the little gazer guy. You can see that it really picks up his, his kind of brow. We'll do it on the side here, top of the eye stalks, and then um, on his face. And that even from this distance, you can see the, the detail on there, just from a little dry brush. And on these little minis, dry brushing is great because you don't need a lot of... Okay, so that is that. Okay. Fun, fun. That is pretty much the green skin on these guys. We'll go ahead now, and I'm going to base coat all of the eyes. Um, we have bone white here. That's where we're going to start. Eyes and horns next? No. Mouth. Changing gears, folks. What I like to do is paint from the inside out when you're painting a miniature. In this miniature, for example, painted the skin because it's the deepest and the biggest area. Next, I'm going to paint the mouth and the inside of the mouth because uh, it's the next kind of deepest area with the tongue. And then I can paint the teeth on top of it so you're not messing up the teeth if you're painting the inside of the mouth first. So. Awesome technique, four simple steps. Yeah, that's right. Sundog just subscribed to uh, the D&D channel. Thanks, Sundog, for doing that. It's such an honor to be on the D&D Twitch, folks. Tell you what. Uh, he is a tiny guy. That is true. Uh, and Mel is also on Twitch now, too. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. <laughs> that's great. Mel, again, Mel plays Callie on our Into the Mist stream, so everybody say hi to, hi to Mel in the chat. And she's a noob, brand new player, uh, played maybe two games of D&D ever, played on one live stream a couple years ago when we were still in our kind of infancy of live streaming. Okay, so now what I'm doing here is I'm painting the gums, tan. I'm trying to see where the mouth ends and kind of the the rest begins I'm pretty sure that it's so funny Bruno keeps growling out there over there I wonder if it's because of sirenscape I know it's creepy buddy I feel the same way dude and I was setting up again we're doing curse of straw so I was setting up our sound um, our sound set for tomorrow night in sirenscape like by myself in my house late at night the other night and I was like I got my 
<laughs> it got my heart pumping a little bit. It was really good. Tomorrow night session is going to be creepy, folks. There is some, there is some serious creep factor going down tomorrow night. I mean, they've all been kind of creepy because it's, but it's going to a, a different level tomorrow night. Okay, so that's that. So that I'm going to let that dry. Um, I don't know. I'm going to switch uh, brushes here. I'm going to go to my zero brush, very small detail brush. We're going to get some more tan color. And I'm going to paint the eyelid, I think, because you can see the eyelid of the gazer in the, in the again, in the uh, source material has a little bit of pink in there. So I'm just going to go through here and just kind of outline the eye. I don't mind getting it on the actual eye because we're painting that. I'd rather do that than get it on the green like that. And then on the bottom as well, again, no big deal to overlap the eyeball itself because we're going to be painting that later anyways. I haven't seen Puppy Lover online yet, and she's the one that asked for this. Hopefully she catches it in the VOD. That's another thing. All of our VODs, folks, are on our YouTube page. But they also go up on the on the on the um, the D and D YouTube as well. Um, but ours is a bit more up to date. We're just working on catching up the D and D YouTube. But you can catch all of our stuff, all twenty nine episodes, on our tw on our YouTube page. That's youtubecom slash Smith. and follow along there. And also, if you guys have miniatures that you want us to see us paint in the next few weeks, uh, please let us know because um, that's where we get requests for this stuff somebody requested this one last week and we did it this week so and i'm putting together the february schedule soon so definitely do that oh, i love all the all the love that into the mist is getting thanks guys okay so this is a uh, this is going to be interesting and tough i'm basically going to put tan into this little tiny mouth like that it was a bit wet so it's actually filled the mouth, and I'm just going to use my brush and kind of sop up that. But there, you barely see it, but I've added a little bit of tan to the inside of that mouth. I'm going to do it again to the other one. Like that. There we go. And again, you're not going to be able to see a lot of it, but at least you'll you will get the the idea or the impression of of what we're doing there um, in the end. So the tan here is almost dry. Um, once it dries on the base coat on the mouth, we're going to give that a flesh wash, and that's going to give it a really cool shadow, which I think I'm going to start doing. Um, still a little wet here. And then we're going to highlight it after that with some rosy flesh. I'm going to do that now. So, flesh wash. For those of you that don't know what washes are, they add natural shadow to a miniature. I should have got some water. Natural shadow to a miniature by um, seeping into the recesses of, of on the miniature. Um, Any chance one gazer could be purple? <laughs> Puppy Lover asked if... Uh, welcome, Puppy Lover. Um, you asked for it. We're doing it. She's here. Um, uh, not purple tonight because we're doing the... We're actually making them close to the colors that they are in the Monsters Manual. But you can follow the same steps that we are um, and just uh, replace you know, darker to lighter purple. And you can absolutely do that for yourself. That's great. Uh, Q Horror asks, dry brush after or before wash? Um, it d depends, actually, on the color. Um, I do it quite often um, before the dry brush. Uh, in this case, that is what I'm doing, although we're not dry brushing the flesh. Um, but typically, I would do a base coat, then a wash, then go into dry brushing. But I don't even think I'm going to use that green wash that I have because I think I like uh, the way that these scales are looking right now. So, um, Oh, Bruno. He does not bark often, folks. He is not happy about something. Okay, so here we go. Flesh wash for those, again, that are new painting. The wash is basically just uh, slightly diluted, and then you're painting it onto an area, 
and it's seeping into the recesses, you're not really painting it, I'm almost manipulating it. So I place it on the miniature and then I move it around the area until it seeps into um, the recesses. You don't want it to pool too much. If it pools too much, then you end up getting, um, it, it, it uh, obscures detail. Bruno, what's going on? Bruno, come here. You wanna say hi? Bruno, come. Bruno, come. Bruno. He's too busy on guard, folks. He usually comes right away, so. He's obviously got something going on. There we go, that's the wash on there. He's looking gnarly. Now, while that wash is drying, washes take a little bit of time to dry, so I'm gonna let that dry on the gazer. I'm gonna move to, sorry, on the spectator. I'm gonna move to the gazers onto the eyes. So basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take bone white, a little bit on our palette, I know, gotta love Bruno. Can I just dip the miniatures into a can of paint and call it a day? Yes, you can. <laughs> like I said, you are the boss of your miniature. <laughs> you can paint your minis however you like. These are just suggestions. And I know some people who do that, basically. Uh, and you're very welcome, Puppy Lover, for doing this one. Um, and thanks, guys, for enjoying Into the Mist. Uh, it's been it's been pretty incredible um, journey so far. Doing a a we're only two episodes in, and uh, we're like twenty five thousand views. I think twenty four, twenty five thousand views on the DD YouTube, and um, our second episode is almost at four thousand. I think, um, and we're just so happy um, with the response and how happy people are, and we're just improving it. Last. Episode we raised one hundred and twenty dollars for Extra Life because we um, people can donate to Extra Life through the stream, and then as it accumulates, it unlocks items that we send the players in game, um, which is a real fun thing that I've I don't think I've ever seen done before. Um, okay, so this is interesting. So we got the we got the gazer here. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm just touching my zero brush to the eyeball on the stock, just to create those little bitty eyes. And this is bone white. I'm just doing that. I'm also going to do it in the eyeball area. Being very careful. Basically just poking at it until the paint deposits the way that I want it to. There's not a lot of brushing at this size. And then I'm going to try and get the teeth, which is probably just going to go over the gums. But see, I'm bracing the miniature like this, and I'm putting my hand on my other hand to really brace my fingers here. Well, that's really working out. Look at that. It actually caught the teeth. Not hard to do, just a bit of a steady hand and patience, and it works. Oh, that worked out really well. Bruno, what is going on with you, buddy? He is not happy. He's not happy. Question, didn't see the young red dragon or young silver dragon on your YouTube. Any chance you will do them? Um, silver, we never did. Red has been announced, but we haven't done it yet because it hasn't been released. So um, we will be doing that at a, a later date for sure. We've done all the other dragons. So any young dragon that is there for Nolzers, we've done. Um... All right, do you clear coat when you're done? Yes, I absolutely do. I use the Vallejo matte varnish. Um, I either do paint on, like these I'll just paint them on. I won't bother spraying them. Um, it's not worth the hassle of going outside in the cold and all of that stuff. Um, and um, so I'll do a brush, a brush on varnish, matte varnish from Vallejo for these. Uh, because again, your players will be handling them at the table. You'll be handling at the table. And after you do all this work, you don't want to waste it by having them all mucked up and, and chipped and all that kind of stuff. So, so there you go. Eye stock's done. Big eyeball done. And we're going to try and get here and do the same magic on the teeth. Don't know how I did it that first time, but we're going to see. 
works. It's amazing how detailed that these miniatures at this size are detailed enough that I can actually pick out the teeth on them. <laughs> they're so fun. I hope I get to use these. I won't in Into the Mist, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't know if there are, but I can add them because I'm the DM. All right. Okay. So that wash is still wet, so I'm going to go ahead and um, continue to do some of the base coating on on the main spectator here with bleach, bleach bone, bleach bone, sorry, bone white. I keep doing that. Sorry, Vallejo. Hopefully Alex isn't watching. Ancient in Ignorance actually has a question. A good friend of ours. Oh, I actually have a question because I've been too afraid to try. Have you airbrushed the Vallejo varnishes? Uh, somebody just asked that actually. And I, I, I said that there is a varnish, I think available from the, the game airline. Um, that is specifically for that purpose. So I would I would trust, Vallejo makes great product, I would trust that if they created a varnish for the game air line, that it's probably safe to put through your airbrush. Um, now I would do some research first, find out which one to use and how to prep it and all of that stuff. But uh, I imagine because the, the varnishes I believe are also um, acrylic, so they are water-based. Um, so you shouldn't have a problem with those. Okay, so that is the base coat on the big eyeball. I did that wrong, folks. His eyeball is not white. It's white in the middle. That's okay. We'll go back in and we'll fix that. I like to have some of these problems while we're going so you guys can kind of figure out how to, how to solve them as we go. into the corners here around the edge and I'm just you can see that this brush is fraying a bit at the end um, which means that you can use your brushes pretty far into their life um, it's always nice to have nice fresh brushes but brushes last a little while now this here is just a bit uh, like a game color paint it's not an extra opaque paint or anything um, if I had more of a palette maybe I would have brought like a um, a heavy khaki or heavy brown to base coat these first before I went with the bone white, but I figure I'll just do two layers of the bone white and it should be okay. Bruno is still growling over there. I don't know if you guys can hear him at all. That, there he goes. That is not werewolf growl in the sound set. That is, that is Bruno. Buddy, what are you growling about? So funny. He rarely, rarely growls as much. Maybe he's like, do not use the varnishes in the airbrush. That isn't a good idea. Okay, so there we go. Oh, I said, oh, he's barking now. Uh, I think I'm going to, uh, I forgot I was going to do the, the horns too. So let's do a couple of those. I'm going to do all the ones along the edge here. Said I was going to do that. I will right, do that. I'm going to go in, base coat all these. Not too worried about having too much of a solid base coat because I am going to add a wash to them. So. I think he's just growling at the sound set. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Unless there's somebody in our studio, which wouldn't be good because I didn't expect anybody, but I think it's okay. At least we're live with a lot of people watching. DMing too much into the mist. Okay. I'm not watching the chat here. Can you do Shadows of Brimstone? Uh, I'm not sure what Shadows of Brimstone is. Um, if somebody can clarify for me. Uh, it's only paint. And that's right, it is only paint. Um, can you use your pull with whisk kits to get them to larger production runs? <laughs> That's funny. I wish. I wish I could do that. They are partners of ours. We are friends. We do lots of stuff together. Unfortunately, folks, I do not have pull on their production runs. I wish. But uh, they do the best that they can. They have a lot of really great content. 
really good product and it's super uber popular and everybody wants it, which is a good problem to have. Um, so uh, they do they do their best and they're trust me, folks, they're they're rocking it and they're doing everything that they can to get everything that you guys want out to you. They've done such an incredible job of creating all of this great stuff that we play with on a regular basis. And the people who work there are just really, really good people. The reason this whole thing started was because Justin, the president of WizKids, got on a Facebook group, a crafting group, and said, hey guys, I'm the president of WizKids. Um, love your feedback on our product. And who does that? What president gets on a Facebook chat with the community and asks questions like that? Anyways, it was amazing. It was incredible. I reached out to him and the rest is kind of history. Um, but he's a super good guy, really close friend of mine now. And I'm just, um, it's an honor to work with those guys. So couldn't say enough, can't say enough good things about the WizKids folks. And they send us lots of great stuff to use in our streams and such. So, all right. Um, now he's got a lot of these horns. I didn't realize how many. So I've basically done all the ones along the back of his head there. Um, I don't know. And now Bruno's snoring. So he can't be that concerned. At least he's not farting because that's the worst. I'll tell you folks, he, he'll clear the studio. Um, it's happened before in our streams. Okay, so I am going to do them all, I guess. I just decided. Uh, I think the gazer at this size will just be more interesting if we have more kind of bony protrusions or, or, or spikes. So I'm just going to continue adding spikes here because why not? Yeah, he does not. I think it's all those background creatures and monsters are you not hearing this the heck I'm zoned in folks I'm zoned in I'm not even looking at the chat I'm zoned in uh, doing the fire giant we did do a fire giant I don't think it's on the YouTube but it is on our Facebook so we did a fire giant at origins uh, and so if you want the fire giant, you can take a look back in our videos from Origins. Um, okay. Some of these weren't running a marathon next door. Maybe that's why he was growling. Okay. Um, good. I think that is... I'm not sure why I keep fixing this main eye because I'm going to have to over it anyways but the perfectionist in me so I'll just go over these are dry now I'm just gonna go over one last time just to make them a bit more solid like that and we're gonna let that dry a little bit that spectator is looking great okay um good so on these gazers like we're not far from done on them there isn't a lot that we can do um, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take my detail brush get some off-white I don't even think I'm going to add a wash to those because they're so small. Um, get some off-white, which is another game color paint. And I'm going to... There's a little too much water on that brush. Um, I'm just going to pop in there. And in the middle of each of these eyes, add a little bit of an off-white highlight. And that's just going to bring the brightness of that eyeball up a bit. Uh, and I'm also going to do a little, oh, too much water. See that? It pooled in there because there's too much water in it. So I just get a brush that I haven't used. Just paint, brush it right off. And that'll come right out. So just make sure that your brushes aren't carrying a lot of, a lot of water when you're doing detail work like this. Because then it'll pool and it's a disaster. Can be. There we go. Do the same here. A little off white in the middle. Like that. And then. There. The 
eye. We're good. And then they have a little like X eye. Almost like they're, they're it's a dead eye. <laughs> um, okay, so that is done. So I'm gonna take uh, those guys are good as like that. I'm gonna take um, sepia wash. Oh, I got umber wash. I needed sepia wash. I will be right back, folks. That is the wrong color. Just got to run into the office here. Grab a sepia wash. I swear it's here somewhere. Where is my sepia wash? Why can't I find it? Oh, did I put it in the wrong spot? I totally put it in the wrong spot. I got these nifty Vallejo paint holders and I put it in the wrong, wrong spot. Here we go, okay. Uh, Shannon, who I met at, um, Pax Unplugged says, Hi, Jason. I am organizing my basement painting station, and I'm glad to take a break to catch your stream. Well, thank you, Shannon. I'm glad. Faithful supporter and watcher and all that great stuff. Ah, oh, so found the Fire Giant video. Thank you so much. That's great. Okay. Okay, um, sepia, here we go. A little sepia wash here on the palette. Again, another wash from Game Color Line. We're gonna use our number two for that. It's a touch of water. And basically what we're doing again, I don't want too much of it on here. This is gonna give it a really cool kind of um, antiqued kind of look. It's gonna give it some shadow into the recesses, and it's just re I love this wash. It's like my favorite Vallejo wash. Um, it does the job so well. And again, just over Bone White, you're gonna see how nicely it does its job. Especially on these, um, on the bony spikes, because the wash will rest kind of in at the base of it uh, and into the ridges, and it just make, gives it awesome texture we're just going to paint those onto there i'm not too worried about getting some of it onto the green it just kind of adds uh what i just realized is i didn't paint all of these spikes i'm gonna have to go back and paint a couple of these spikes on the left side here his right my left Look at that, I have all these guys I totally didn't do. So just grabbing bone white and then I quickly hit those. That might even be it. Yeah, that's all I need. Oops, so I'll just leave those to last. Those kind of layer paints dry fairly quickly, so. Again, we're just adding the wash to all these spikes. Is there anybody who's watching who will be at GaryCon that we have the we have the uh, benefit and honor of, me of meeting, the privilege of meeting? Love to hear, Jason. Any way you could add the drider to the schedule? Ooh. I've wanted to add the drider to the schedule, and now there's a there's a good reason. I can absolutely can absolutely do that. And we'll do that in in February. I'll try and put it earlier into the schedule. It's a really cool miniature. Okay. Um, there we go. If you're running a drider, are you running a um, Underdark campaign, by chance. Okay, so that's what it should look like. Um, it's a little messy now, you'll see, but then we'll come back in with some off-white and it'll really 
um, bring that out. I'm um, also then, now that the um, kind of the flesh wash in the mouth is done, I'm going to come in with some rosy flesh. Uh, that is kind of this pinkish color, flesh color. Um, Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Now, with this rosy flesh, this is what we're going to do. I'm just planning on adding some light highlights to the gums and the rest. So I'm just going to go through here and just add dots to the gums above the teeth. Basically, just catching the edge of those areas like that. And then on the bottom as well, um, a lot, very little of this is gum. Most of it's just teeth, but I'm gonna try and catch what I can. Uh, let's see, and then inside the mouth, there's some Some kind of like fleshy parts inside here, like that. And then I'm gonna dry brush the tongue with uh, that rosy flesh. Because that'll pick up the, the um, texture really nicely and it'll be subtle, subtle-er. I might come in with some solid after that, but for right now, just want that kind of pink texture to show through. It's actually coming out a lot lighter than I thought it would. Although it might darken down a little bit when it's next to the... And that's another thing too is, is colors really react and look different based on the colors that surround them. Um, and so that looks really light right now, but when we add some off-white onto the teeth, that might die down a little bit. I also might add a second kind of flesh wash on that tongue just to mute it a little bit. Bring some of that detail back. And then on the teeth, I'm gonna go in here with my zero brush and kind of hit all the teeth inside his mouth. So let's see if I can do that. Let's see if I can do this. Basically I'm just doing downward straight strokes on all the individual teeth. And that is a toothy maw that is love this sound set it's really good especially for for a, one of the free ones I think it was the first one you get hopefully I'm not wrong on that I'm pretty sure it is so you can see already how that's looking. Um, I may add some off-white to that just to, yeah, that's cool. Now that um, CPU wash is still drying on those eyes in some areas, not all of them, but in some. So we're just gonna wait a second uh, more We'll go to the gazers real quick. Um, Joseph Warren is asking how to become a mod. That is a great question. Uh, I don't know if any of the D&D moderators are on tonight. Um, uh, oh, cool. Stu Good says, we're playing your adventure boxes in our tabletop. They're in the sewers. That is so cool. Sewers is three, box three, I think. That is awesome. Please let me know how they're doing and how you're enjoying it. Anyway, uh, I will absolutely do the drider. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know you were a subscriber. That's amazing. Appreciate that. And uh, welcome to the realm. That's awesome. Uh, okay. Cool. Very cool. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go back in here now to this guy. I think the only thing left to do really is add in uh, to the little gazer guys 
is really just to add the eyeball. So this is going to be interesting because I can definitely add, I'm confident to add the eyes on the little stalks because they're about the same size actually as eyes on a miniature. I'm a little nervous uh, about the cross. So let's just see how this goes. I got a new brush for this purpose because I knew these eyes were going to be interesting. So we're going to just do a line down there. Just a straight line down these like that. And then in this, which corner do I want to do? I'll do this corner. In this corner, we're going to do a cross this way. Actually, that wasn't so bad. And across this way. There. That worked out okay. The second crossover thing I did wasn't the greatest. But there it is. There. Kind of looks like he's looking to the left a bit. It's good. Okay. That is one gazer done. Second gazer. Again, we're just doing a straight line down the eye stalks. I always hold my breath when I do these. Probably shouldn't, but there we go. And then on this one, I'm going to do it a bit more central because there. And that is <laughs> gazer number two. That one's a little too far off to the left. It looks almost like he has a an eye that doesn't exist or it's too far over or whatever, but that's fine. I wanted to get, do it kind of like the... Okay, I like the subject or the illustration there. Okay, so the washes are all dry now. This is great. So I'm going to add a second wash of flesh wash to the tongue. And that's hopefully going to bring some of that, yeah, some of that red back. I like that. You can see right in there the texture already got added back. Darkened it down a little bit, and that's kind of what I wanted. I'm going to go and do that kind of to that part there. Tongue is done. Then... I'm going to close in the main eye, I think, at this point. That's kind of the next the next deal. So for that, I'm going to use Somber Gray. And Somber Gray is going to be in the recesses. And I'm pretty sure he's got like this blue kind of like halo um, around a white pupil, which is really kind of creepy. So uh, I'm going to get in here with... I'm going to use my zero brush, even though it's a large area, just because... I want to take it easy. Typically, I'd use a, a bigger brush than this, but for right now, I think this is the best scenario. Now, I have to make my circle first to kind of determine where the main eye is going to be. I probably made it too small at this point, but I can make it bigger when there's some water coming down here. I don't want that water to pool. Actually, kind of is. Wipe it off and then just whisk it out best I can. What happens is when you wash your brush, water kind of tends to, to collect up at the top of the ferrule. This metal part is called the ferrule. And when it does that, it'll, it'll <laughs> drip down the brush or seep down the brush until it eventually gets onto your bristles and then onto your miniature. So you want to always make sure that your brush is completely dry. So yeah, I'm gonna have to open up that that central eyeball a little bit because I think I came in a little too tight there on that. So let's we'll do that in a sec. No biggie. And when you're doing big areas like this, sorry, big like smooth areas like this, you want to water down your paint a little bit more because you don't want kind of that texture of the paintbrush to show up, so you want to smoothen it out a bit. Okay, so that's fine. At least I know that's center, and then I can close it in a bit more when the time comes. Um, let that somber gray dry a little bit, and then we will come in with, um, I'm gonna, start on the 
start on some off-white on the eye stock eyeballs. So we're going to start in the middle, make gradual circle larger, keeping some of that washed bone white in the recesses to add some depth there, much like we did on the beholder. Again, same thing happened. So I had water on there. It pooled into the center. So I'm just going to dry my brush and pull some of it back off and then go back in and grab some undiluted bone white. There we go. Most mistakes can be fixed by using a brush that you haven't really used much. Um, and then use it just to kind of basically like absorb the paint off the miniature. Or just wipe it off. Sometimes I use my finger if it's a larger area. Having said you like dragons in the past, this is B. Fisher. Do you think you'll do the three gnolls or baby dragons? I might. So um, I would use, for those of you that are kind of waiting for those, because I know some people have said that. Um, for those of you that want me to paint the the mini dragons, uh, like the wormlings, um, you can use the same techniques that I use on the, on the young dragons for those miniature tech guys. Just obviously smaller brushes, more... Um, more kind of fine work. Uh, I've been asked to do the red wormling. I might do that one. Um, I just don't want to do too many dragons on the stream and not get to other things. But that said, like uh, as I mentioned before, um, uh, you can use some of the, the young dragon techniques and colors and palette and all that kind of stuff for the wormlings. I'm going to take off white and I'm just going to put it on the edge of some of these fangs here and that'll make them look nice and sharp and dangerous, and they'll stick out a bit more. Just want to kind of catch them here like this. There. There we go. Okay, cool. We're getting there. He's looking good. Okay, so that central eye now that is dry. All of that somber gray is dry. I'm going to come back in again with some bone white and work out that circle again um, the best that I can. So I'm just going to start in the middle here like this. And then I'm just going to work it out. Get too wet. Work out from the center and just create a circle like so. It's still really wet. There we go. That is a decent circle, I think. Uh, a bit more on this side, perhaps. Doesn't have to be perfect, but when it comes to this, this stuff, I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist, which can be a downfall. Okay, so that is the circular, creepy eye of the spectator. Let that dry. Um, I'm going to come back in with some um, more off-white here. And I'm just going to do a couple lines here on some of these, some of these um, spikes. Just catch the tips. Just again so that they stick out a little bit, a little bit more. Just giving them some depth with a highlight at the top where the light would catch. Um, like that. Perfect. I'm just going to go through and do that on all of them. So with the side ones. There. Okay. 
Uh, I'm also, so that's still drying in there. So that is good. Um, I will maybe, let's see here. I will maybe hit this eye now. So that is pretty much dry in the middle. I'm gonna hit this with some off what of some off white and really bring up the brightness on this center eye. It's kind of the next step here. There we go. That's super creepy. Okay. Then now that that's done, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring out the steel gray. Thank you very much. Um, Master of the Game RPG says, this is fantastic. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, is that Lee, Master of the Game? I know that uh, we have a, somebody in our community who his name is Lee, and he runs a channel, and I don't know if it's... The same person. Question, Jason, what's the miniature that you are waiting the most to paint? Your absolute favorite that maybe is not even out yet. No, the terrace doesn't count. <laughs> uh, ooh, that is a good question. Is there a miniature that isn't out yet? Okay, before I get into that, I'm using Steel Gray, which is another uh, Vallejo game color paint. Um, and it's kind of a blue-gray, and I'm using that to create the veins that come out of the side of the eye. Uh, again, a, a creature that isn't released yet that I want to paint, or, yeah, that I want to paint or isn't released yet. That is, that's good. I've, I've had the opportunity to paint a lot of really great stuff. Um... That's a good question. Let me think on that for a sec. And this is way too wet again. Um, it's coming out a little too. Let's try that again. There we go. For this, you need it to be really kind of dr not dry, but you want it to flow. But you don't want it to be too. Just doing kind of squiggly lines leading up from the edges onto and towards the eye here, like that. And then I am going to use this to create that halo, to start the halo around the eye. But I'm leaving a thin, thin line of somber gray between the, the eyeball or the pupil and this kind of halo. And then I'm going to use electric blue to really bring it all in. To really kind of pop it. You can see how that's coming along. Um, I'm going to do the electric blue now. Uh, my name, my, my mini is a Githzari. Oh, cool. Uh, Githzari. Uh, I know that who they are. The Gith. Uh, monk. Uh, what's the best way to do the dark freckles near the joints for that race? The fanning of the brush that you've shown or just, oh, interesting. Yeah, so you could do a speckle, like a, but you'd have to do it, kind of do that first and then paint the rest after. So you have to do it kind of as, as a base coat. But yes, a, a quick kind of speckle would be the most natural kind of random or just fine dots. You're stippling with a zero brush to create the, the, um, the freckles, but the, uh, kind of fanning your brush, holding the tip of your brush like this, putting in some paint and then, and then letting it go like that. And right close to the miniature would probably be your best bet, but it's hard to control. So you want to do it first. If you don't like it, paint over it, try it again. Uh, and then, yeah. All right. So, this is, again, fine detail work. We're going to come around with this electric blue. Uh, and again, getting water, pooling. Don't want that. 
not sure why this brush is carrying so much water. Let's try that again. But you can see it's all gone. That was just take a take a dry brush that isn't hasn't been used and whisk the paint away. There we go. Okay, so that, I think that did the trick there. It's not quite as dark as I had hoped it would be. I might do a little bit of a wash around it, uh, the eye, because I don't, I, it, I would have liked it to be a little bit darker. I thought that's somber gray, but it's a little too blue for me. Um, so I might come back in with that, uh, but we'll see. All right, so let's do the pupils like the slit I guess that's the iris I've been calling it the pupil it's actually the iris not the pupil um, the pupil would be the slit that I'm about to do so first we'll do the the ones on the eye stalks again all we're doing is a straight line trying to taper it so that it's thin then goes to a bit thicker it goes back to a fine point again totally drop my brush happens um let's try this again let's see okay so again you kind of want to taper it a little bit but sometimes it's difficult to do i don't know why this is not give me a second here Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a bit more of this black here because it seems to be, maybe I didn't shake it up enough. There we go. Now it's better. Consistency was a little too wet and diluted. All right. Question. Uh, nope. Juice, that's right, Lee Patterson. Good, welcome in. Um, my wife and I have been painting minis on my Twitch. It's hilarious because she criticizes my painting. She is good and I am not very good. <laughs> that's awesome, that's great. <laughs> that's fun. And thanks, Bryce Loves Gaming, for hosting us. That's really cool. There we go, there's another one done. It's not super solid. One it's salt. There we go. There's another one done, and then another one here, and then one here. Ooh, the creepy music starts. Okay, and then there is one obviously right in the middle of the eye. Um, I could have done it off to the side like that one is, but I kind of like the idea of it being in the center for this one. This is the moment of truth here, folks. Carefully trying to taper it in the middle a little bit. Like that. And that just really completes it. It's amazing how all of a sudden that miniature looks totally different to me anyways when you add that pupil, that evil pupil. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna take that black and I'm gonna add a bunch of water to it and create a bit of a wash here. And you're gonna have to dilute it quite a bit to do this. I don't have my black wash handy, but I'm just gonna do use black paint. I'm just gonna paint it into The recesses, I should use a smaller brush for this because it's a bit too big, into the recesses here around the eyeball. Keep it away from the actual eyeball and that will darken it a fair amount and subdue kind of, there we go, that blue, add some shadow. there. And 
Now these don't have kind of a, a ground um, texture on the bases. You can paint them, you can texture them if you want. Uh, I'll probably just leave it like this and put it on the black, on the black base, uh, mini base that you usually have for everything. Uh, I think that is it for the gazer, uh, or sorry, for the um, spectator. Um, actually, you know what? I am gonna do one more thing here. The gazers are done. A pair of gazers, that's what they look like in the end. Uh, yeah. Sorry, that was horrible. Um, Bryce Loves Gaming says, love your paint work. Thank you. We love you guys. Appreciate that. All right, and um, we're going to use livery green for this. And I'm going to use my zero brush. And I'm going to come in here and just add some um, edge highlighting, I guess, to a lot of it. He's a little, now that I have them all painted, uh, I'm finding like some of his areas are a little dark. So I'm just going to like hit the edges of some of his some of his scales to really kind of make them pop and bring them out of, there we go. Bring some of that detail out. You can see what's, what it's doing there. Um, just really making kind of like the scales in the front pop a bit more. Um, yeah, on, the, on the ridge here, of course, that was a bit too much. Just wanted a little bit, but it's okay like that and I am going to hit kind of like the center on these and up the sides like that and I think that this is really going to make them pop. You can see here in front of me, you can see kind of the beginning of tomorrow night's set. You can see a little bit of the top for our players tomorrow night for Into the Mist. I'm just going to do some thin lines again, kind of along the top ridges of some of these. He's really starting to pop a bit more now. I like it. It's kind of a, an extreme edge highlight, which is good. It's kind of what I'm going for. Just makes his scales pop a bit better. I'm just hitting it, like I said, straight lines across his arms, his stalks. His arms are his stalks. <laughs> kind of the top end of this as well. Perfect. There we go. I think that's it for the spectator and gazers, folks. Done a little early today. Done a half an hour early today, but that's okay. I like to keep it a little shorter just because it helps to, um, for those watching VOD, to kind of catch what's going on a little faster um, and then you have a nice bite-sized tutorial for you folks to follow later. So let's take one last look here. Here is the gazer, sorry, the spectator. Um, really quick two-hour paint job, not even because we painted some gazers to hour and a half actually and I did a lot of talking too so even less than that. So that is the spectator again his little gazer buddies 
one last close look at those two. Uh, we will be posting photos of these on the uh, Realmsmith Instagram. You can catch us at, at Realmsmith TV on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you follow us on Twitch. Uh, follow us on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube because uh, all the VODs get uploaded to there. So make sure that you do that. Um, oh, I do have a question here. Um, what are your favorite colors from the Vallejo line? Oh, man, there are so many. Uh, I'm really digging stale gray right now. Uh, heavy Sienna is a huge one for me. I do a lot of heavy lifting with the heavy extra opaque Sienna. Um, sepia wash is my favorite wash. Uh, I could go on for a long time. Um, dark flesh tone is really great, too. Um, and all of that. So... Um, Thank you so much again to our partners, D&D, WizKids, and Vallejo. And make sure you catch us tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, for episode three of Into the Mist, our Curse of Strahd campaign live on the D&D Twitch and on our Realmsmith Twitch as well. You can watch it both places, but you can only uh, interact and donate on the Realmsmith Twitch. Um, but you can, so if you're watching on the D&D Twitch and you prefer to do that, you can jump over to our channel, do that, and then go back if you want or whatever. Uh, we're all friends and we all just want to help this community grow and do wonderful, fun things together. My camera totally shifted midstream. Uh, thanks so much. You guys have a great week. Um, next week, I don't know what I'm painting yet. I'm kind of going week to week now because it's been a crazy month with Into the Mist, but I am going to launch or release a schedule for February so that we know what's coming week to week so you guys can actually get the paints and the minis and paint with me live. Um, it would be a lot of fun, but that is a wrap on the spectator and the gazers we'll see you tomorrow night don't miss it and uh you guys have a wonderful rest of your sunday night take care have a good one guys